this is going to be a numbers and data heavy kind of video. If you are more into vlogs or more into like comparisons or just chatting, this might not be the video for you, but if you wanna kind of take a deeper dive on what the market looks right now for sailboats, then stay tuned, this might be a good video for you. I did a video similar to this previously and it focused specifically on catamarans that were for sale under $250,000 and since then I got a lot of requests and advice and feedback from individuals who, who just gave me more ideas on how to basically do that video but take it further to provide even more value. Um, so that's what this is. This is kind of like the cats under 250000 video but not specific to catamarans. This is across all sailboats. The data here is 22, it's over 22,000 different boat listings and it's for monoholes, catamarans, anything that's under a million dollars and anything that's 30 feet or longer. The reason there being this is more for people who are considering cruising on their boat rather than just day sailing. And there's a lot, a lot of the smaller day sailor boats and they didn't really factor into this. So. Uh, once again, the data is all sailboats that are greater than or equal to 30 feet and less than $1 million. So I'm going to jump into the numbers here and you see it on my screen. This is, I'm just going to give you a quick preview of what the data looks like here. The data here is, well, it's, it's a massive spreadsheet. I've got it split out here into the length of the boat, the date the boat was created, the brand, the listing price, and then a cleaner version of the listing price, where it's from and then extra information about it. This sheet is actually pretty massive and really, really bogs down my computer's capacity. And right now, because I'm doing a screen recording, it's even worse. Scroll, I say. There we go. 22,314 different rows. All right, so obviously this is more data than you can even go through manually. So I split it out in, into different charts that will be more useful. I'm just gonna go ahead and close this data right now because it's making my computer think really hard. All right, so I distilled all of that data down into uh, 14 different charts here that I think are useful. So if you're familiar with the industry at all, you're searching for to buy a boat or you work in the industry or you have already bought a boat, then a lot of this isn't going to be earth shattering, but it was interesting to pull the numbers out and confirm some of the commonly held beliefs that we have. There were actually a few surprising trends, at least for me, that I found in the data that I think were worth sharing here. So the first chart here is, this is just kind of to show how massive this data set is, is the total number of boats as sorted by length, all right? And, and so what we see here is that pretty much the most average type of boat is going to be between 36 and 42 feet long. There's obviously lots of options on either side of this. Not a huge surprise here. Uh, obviously there are fewer longer boats. So what does this data look like if you split out catamarans from it? So if we split out catamarans, this data looks like this. The catamarans are in blue and the monoholes are in orange. And you see here that there are significantly fewer catamarans on the market. This isn't really a surprise to people who are looking for catamarans, but this is a very clear, easy to understand visual representation of the difference between the availability of catamarans and monoholes. There is literally like a, there's 10 times more monoholes out there for any given length. You can also see that the catamarans don't really have much of a representation until you hit about 34 feet. After 34 feet, there are a number of options up until about 52 feet, after which the only th you get a few pops here for the really, really massive luxury catamarans. But other than that, there's almost nothing represented longer than 60 feet. So let's move on to the next one. This is the total number of boats by year. The data, so the data that I scraped actually had a few listings as far back as 1860, not very many. You can see that the industry really does kind of take off right around 1975. There's kind of this peak here, peak and then recession where they were building fewer boats and then bam, once we hit 2000, there, the number of boats that are for sale are massive. And, and, and remember, you got to remember this is listings, this isn't the amount of boats that were produced. There may have been plenty of boats that were produced or equal number of boats that are produced in say 1985 as compared to 2005, but there are fewer of them listed on the market right now. So out of curiosity, let's split them again between catamarans and monoholes. And what you see right here is the data for, there's a spike right here, but this is pretty much 
everything that was pre-1945. I just kind of grouped them all together because that wasn't very interesting data. And you can see that catamarans don't, you don't even have a blip for listed catamarans until 1977, after which it's really not hardly anything. And right around 2000, we start getting actual listings, you know, boats that were built around 2000 and that are on the market right now. You can see that the peak of that is right around the 2007 and 2009. Presumably, this is because a lot of charter companies will keep boats in charter for about 10 years, after which they are less popular and considered like not in vogue. And because catamarans are used heavily in the chartering community, they go on sale uh, after 10 years, and this is why you get a peak right here of 10 years. And um, it looks like more or less is kind of true of the people tend to hold on to their model holes until at least about five years in, and then maybe more and more after about 10 years, a lot of them go in the market. Switching over to total number of boats by price, okay? So A, we sorted them based on by length and then by year, and now we're gonna look at them by price. What's the price distribution of this? The vast majority of boats are listed are between the, let's say, 40 to 100K range. Obviously, there's more expensive boats, but the more expensive they get, the fewer buyers you're going to have, so the smaller the market is. And once you cross the, let's say, 500,000 threshold, there really is comparatively slim pickings for listings. Let's do the same thing. Let's split it out by monoholes and catamarans. And... You see here there is a difference that the catamarans, you don't really start to get a significant number of listings until you hit maybe the 120,000 mark. Again, this won't be a surprise for the catamaran shoppers out there, but but this is a little bit difficult to see uh, because the catamaran, just the amount of catamarans in the market is so much smaller than the amount of, amount of monoholes in the market. So let's, I have another chart here where I kind of break the scale a little bit. So. In this same chart, blue for catamarans, orange for monoholes, I just have two different axes here. But what I want to illustrate is that just the overall shape. There are a lot of monoholes for $120,000 or less. Whereas you see that the bulk of the catamarans doesn't even start till about $120,000. And then the, and then the curve for both, actually the curve for monoholes decreases more rapidly and then the curve for catamarans, which decreases a lot slower. And this will become even more apparent in some later, in a later chart. So moving on now, so that, that was kind of, the, the whole point of those previous charts was to give you an idea of what the overall market looked like. But um, obviously when you're shopping for a boat, you're gonna be looking probably in a specific range. So what I did here was I grouped some of the major characteristics of monoholes and catamarans into different pricing buckets. So you can look at each bucket here and decide like, okay, if I'm shopping in more or less this bucket range, what is the average boat look like for that bucket? Okay, so this is a lot right here. This is just kind of too much, um, all these colors and blah, it's overwhelming. But you, let's just look at the axes here. We have pricing buckets that are, this one is up to 50,000, this one is up to 100,000, up to 150,000 and so on. Uh, up to a million dollars here. On the left hand side, we have the total number of boats that are available. And on the on the right hand side we have the year. All right, so I'm gonna to make this easier to look at. I broke it into two different charts. This first chart here is the same as the previous. I just grayed out the data by length. That's not important right now. We see here that the average age of a catamaran in the up to fifty thousand dollar group is 1990 which isn't really surprising. And the average age is 1984. If you look across the board, you can see a pretty solid trend here. And it's not its not really a surprise, but the monohull, the average monohull age for any given price group tends to be about like 10, eight to 10 years older than a the catamarans in that comparable price group, which again, isn't much of a surprise given how many older monoholes are out there of all varying price ranges. Let's look at the length chart. This one is a little bit more telling. Um, basically, if you want to compare apples to apples, uh, you you would you wouldn't compare a 40 foot catamaran to a 40 foot monohull. They're just not. It's it's not really a fair comparison. A better way to do it would be to compare, say, a monohull that is two hundred fifty thousand dollars to a catamaran that's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. What can you get with that budget? And this is what that chart shows that the monoholes, which is red here, 
tend to be about, uh, let's say, six to seven feet longer in the lower price ranges here. And the bigger your pricing bucket, the bigger the difference between the monoholes and the catamarans. All right, so this helps you if, if your budget is up to two hundred thousand dollars. You can be you're going to be shopping around a thirty-nine foot probably catamaran. That's the average model that's listed. But you could get a forty-five foot monohull for that same price. Okay. All right, so moving on, more averages. This particular chart was interesting for me, not because it was groundbreaking, but it did reinforce the what you hear about in the community that you're not sure if it's just old wives' tales or if it's actually real data. But yes, catamarans are twice as expensive as comparable monohulls for the same length, okay? So we've got it separated here by length. The cat cost is the blue and the mono cost, the average mono cost is the orange. These are boats up to 35 feet, up to 40 feet, up to 45 feet, up to 50 feet. So the average cost, you can see here, between the 35 feet to 40 foot range is that the catamaran is double, literally more than double the cost of a mono hull. And the trend continues here, double, 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 um, right up until about the 60 foot range. Then you're only talking about a $200,000 disparity between the two. And beyond 75 feet, there's just no real data for catamarans. Um, but this is the average mono cost. So if you're looking at an 80 foot mono hull, you can, the average cost for an 80 foot mono hull is half a million dollars. Okay, so this was interesting. This very clearly shows that catamarans are more expensive for the same length. Now something that I was curious about was, does the length of the boat change over time? So what's the average length of a catamaran over time? What's the average length of a mono hull over time? I wanted to know this because if the price was changing over time, maybe that meant that the boats were actually getting bigger on average over time. But when we look at the data here, we see that historically, the boats that are still listed on the market are the bigger boats for monohulls, um, which I thought was interesting. And then they trend down really about to 1983, after which we get a slight trend up, but more or less, the average monohull length and the average catamaran length after about 1985 is pretty close to the same as one another, and they don't really vary. There's not, if anything, there's a slight decrease here to the overall length of these boats. I got another chart here that illustrates this better. This is a scatter plot, which is the same exact data as in the previous one, but this allows us to put trend lines in, and you see that the monoholes decrease in size. Presumably this is because the bigger monoholes that are old are the ones that are kept around, that are preserved, that are restored, and the smaller monoholes get discarded for newer smaller monoholes. The data for the catamarans is kind of all over the board because there's hardly any data for the 1980s. Really, the catamarans start hitting their stride in the 2000s. And this is when the data sort of normalizes out. And you can see here that the trend lines, they're a little bit varied because of the crazy data for the early numbers for both catamarans and monoholes, but they are fairly flat. They're not steep in one way or another, and they correlate pretty well with one another. Why is this important? This last chart here, to me, is the most interesting chart and the most relevant for people who are considering buying a boat and don't know if they're going to go monohull or catamaran. Now, this is the average cost of boat per year. And we already established with the previous slides that the boats aren't getting any longer per year. So what this really shows us is the average cost of the average boat over the years. And some of this surprised me, actually, because I would have thought that the cost of the boats leveled out quicker than they do. Um, but I guess that's not true, meaning I would have thought they depreciated uh, more quickly than what the charts show or the, what the charts indicate. So what we do see here is that the rate that boats get cheaper for year-over-year -year models from the present into the past is more or less the same for catamarans and monohulls. You do see that the catamaran data tends to fall apart after 1985 and the variance, the variance is much, right here, is much more tight than after anything about 2000 we start getting crazy data. Um, but we do have better data for the monohulls. There is also increased variance for the older boats and then it gets really, really tight right here. Um, so there's a very clear trend for the cost of boats year over year. This, so this number isn't exactly the same as depreciation, but I bet there's a correlation. So this is to say that you can't necessarily expect that the boat that you bought in 2015 for you know 290,000 is going to cost 
uh, in 15 years that you'll be able to sell it for 150,000. That may or may not be true. Just historically speaking, this is saying that a boat that's 20 years old almost always seems to cost the same amount less than a than a comparable boat that's uh, new. So what's another little interesting thing here is that the boats up until the 1995s, the monohulls at least, kind of hold their value a little bit better than around the 2000s as they lose value. So I'm not sure what happened here. If any of you guys knows, I'd, I'd be curious. But for whatever reason, these boats in the 19, the mid-1990s have higher values on average than the uh, boats in the 2000s. Um, again, you do see a, uh, a really consistent depiction here that the average catamaran is about $200,000 more expensive than the average monohull. Yeah. Uh, if you're new, this will help you get an overview of the market as it is right now. If you're familiar with the market, this can at least help reinforce or dispel some, some of the notions you may have had already. I know for me, this is helpful, so I have a more forest for the trees picture. You know, I, I was very narrowed into a specific subset of boats that fit my specific criteria, but I found it useful in doing this to, again, see the forest for the trees and get a better appreciation of what all is out there. It really, I guess the things that this really did reinforce for me is that A, catamarans are about twice as expensive as, as monohulls, B, there is tons and tons of more monohulls out there, and C, you know, you're really not going to be able to find much in the way of catamarans for anything less than $150,000, but when it comes to monohulls, there are tons and tons of options, and now we know it by looking at the data instead of just anecdote. So, but yeah, let me know if this video was useful. A lot of people actually requested this video, and I'm glad I made it. Hopefully you found value in it, and I guess let me know if you see anything in the data that I've showed here on the charts that might have some real world reasoning, like why why do the monoholes in the mid 90s hold their value better than the boats in the early 2000s? I would be curious to learn that. Oh, and if you're curious about how I did this, I used a screen scraping tool in Chrome as a browser, and then I processed pretty much all of the data using Google Sheets. It's not necessarily the best way of doing this, but it worked for me. And yes, it was a lot of work, but I was able to do it while listening to audiobooks and just kind of geeking out, so not a big deal. Hope you liked it. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please like. If you're new here, subscribe, because we're going to keep doing videos showing the data that we uncover as we research to buy our boat. Check out our Patreon if you'd like to help us make more of videos like this and vlogs in the future. Check out, we have an Etsy store if you want to buy shirts. This is one of the shirts we make that will help support our channel too. Other than that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.